What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Serious Gentleman Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Zista. With me, John. Hello. How goes it? It's good. Yeah? It's good. Hmm. Sadly, we're down a fellow. We are. Internet weather is a bitch. So... Although apparently it's more widespread than I thought, because I saw a couple people on Facebook around the area were posting like, "I have no internet for the week." I was like, oh. "That's pretty oh. terrible." Yeah, I okay. just got mine resolved today, which is rather ironic because today is the day that everybody else has failed. So I must have harnessed all the power into myself. Yeah, you oh, stole well. all the internet. I did. Funny. I did, and I'm not. I'm not going to complain. No, no, why would you? More internet is good for me. Exactly. So, favorite gaming rumors. Mm. Gaming rumors. The first one, definitely not my favorite, but the first one I think that really was a big mainstream gaming rumor was the nude code for uh, Tomb Raider. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the first one ever. Yeah, yeah. If I, not I mean, one of the first ones, because I'm sure there were one. there were more in in NES and stuff, but. But it's one of the more well known ones, I think. Yeah, it, like sure. I feel like it's the first big like fan made, you know, kind of like rumor that that spread went viral out of control. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Because everybody, even if you've never played Tomb Raider, you've heard of that, you know. There were pictures of it in, like, Electronic Gaming Monthly and everything like that. Like, is it real? Is it a hoax? I don't know. Oh, my God. You know? so. And funny enough, those magazines were, like, the worst purveyors of, like, those kind of hoaxes and stuff. Because, like, I guess no one realized half the time it was an April Fool's joke. But, my God. I mean. Well, that was before the internet, so. Kind of before yeah. the internet. It was the very early stages of the internet, anyway. Right. You know, dial up on Windows 95 connecting to AOL. <sighs> the good old days. Mm. Yeah. So, I don't know. What, what's the first one that you can remember outside of the Tomb Raider one? Uh, first one I remember is probably Mortal Kombat 2 with the mm-hmm. Ermac thing. Yeah. Um, because that was... What was that, 90... Uh, early 90s. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was definitely before Pokemon, because Pokemon really sticks out in my brain, but, like, the first one was definitely Mortal Kombat 2 with the Ermac thing, because that was weird. That was really weird, because everyone was like, What's, what are Ermacs encountered? What is right. that? Who's that? Well, the, the funny funny thing enough with Ermac is Ermac actually existed all the way back to Mortal Kombat 1, Right. It oh. became more popular by the time Mortal Kombat 2 came out, but it started in 1. Because yeah. if you remember in Mortal Kombat 1, there was the uh, uppercut your opponent when the bird or whatever flew across the moon and you would unlock yeah. the, the actual hidden character reptile, the f- hidden fight. Well, people who like reverse engineered the arcade cabinets and stuff like that um, uh, would find that there was uh, something called uh, uh, Ermax listed in the audit menu right under the reptile fight. Yeah. So what they would, like, you would assume that meant there's another hidden fight because it's, it's right there. It's the only thing under reptile fight. So you'd think one hidden character, Ermax would be a second hidden character. And yeah. it further got perpetuated when uh, an error would uh would happen in the game when under certain cons- uh conditions when scorpion would fight against scorpion and the menu would bug out and um it would it would say the character's name as ermac in all capital letters which uh is short for error macro yeah so and then it would uh, incorrectly call upon one of the palette swaps and actually make Scorpion red. So it would be Scorpion's moves. And on a red ninja. On a red ninja that was actually playable in the arcade, the original Mortal Kombat 1, through the glitch. 
but it had Scorpion's moves. So yeah. that's how Ermac even became a thing in the first place. By the time Mortal Kombat 2 hit, the rumors were just out of control that he was, yeah. you know, unlockable character, you know, and all this stuff. And then when uh, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 came out, that's when, playable. yeah, that's when they went and actually added him to the game, which was phenomenal because that sparked basically confirmation that he was in the games all along. And uh, if you go yeah. back and read Ermac's story, it says that he's he's been there from the beginning, you know, watching the tournament and everybody, you know, like, so the <laughs> their whole background story that they put in just further perpetuated this rumor that yeah. wasn't even real to begin with. He had a bit of fun with it, yeah. I, I guess. And it was funny, because I remember, I think, in regular Mortal Kombat 3, there was, like, in the, um, the, whatever, like, the, the trailer hype thing before you put your coins in the cabinet or started the game, mm-hmm. he would, you know, Ermac would show up, like, for, like, a half a second mm-hmm. and, like, do something and then, like, would go away. And it was funny, because the text was wrong, because I actually read that, I think, Ed Boon wanted to put it in, like, at the last minute. Right. And it was, like... He didn't have time to like get the right font and everything for his like his life bar and everything like that. So he just kind of like threw it in as like a quick joke, and then eventually did the same thing with Rain because he just really wanted to fuck with people. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Mortal Kombat's been one of the ones where they really kind of played around the fan base rumors for for a really long time. I know uh, they'd um, like one of the burned characters. Uh, like from the the scorpion fire and everything, like the skeleton, uh, yeah. was actually rumored to be a playable character for the longest time. And then I think in like Mortal Kombat four, I think oh, it yeah. was the plays meat. Yeah, they they actually added meat into the game as a hidden character. Mm-hmm. So like they they really always played into those fan rumors and and really did that. So Mortal Kombat's kind of a bit of an exception where they kind of cater to the fan rumors. So pretty much, yeah. I mean that that game was a lot of fan service in a lot of ways. I mean, it was. They, they really, and and I mean, n- not to mention even just the controversy surrounding it when those games came out. You know, they got a lot of attention, and that got a lot of you know, it was new and cool, and and it got a lot of minds working. So like your imagination just ran wild. I mean, like look from one to two, you you know you found the hidden reptile boss, and then in two you could play as him, yeah. which was so cool for you know when we were kids, right. So, yeah, they they really they they knew what they were doing. They they knew. They did. Um, I don't know the uh, the big one for me. Pro this this one's gonna be hands down my favorite was the alleged Triforce in Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Oh God, <laughs> lives have been lost trying to find that fucking thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, now, you know, with with internet and technology and things, people have actually, like, hooked the cartridge to the computer and, like, data mined everything, and it's nowhere to be found. So no. it's not in the game in any way, shape, or form. But I, uh, back in the day, spent quite a bit of time looking for the Triforce. Uh, the internet was, like, ridiculously crazy with... Um, there was uh this li- this lady I want to put it because we don't don't really know much about her um with uh, she went under the name of uh, Ariana Almondas and I remember being part of the Zelda form that uh, that this was on and I think it was Zelda dot net or Legend of Zelda dot net or something like that mm-hmm. um I don't remember the exact website but I, I it was one that was really popular that's not even around anymore. Um, and, uh, I remember cause I was playing into it as if I had actually found it and I was telling people like, oh yeah, yeah, it's real. Like I, <laughs> I was one of those assholes that's just like, no, it's real. Like I fucking just got it. Like I followed the steps exactly. And you know, it was one of those things where it's like, you have to, uh, go through the whole starting area and, um, go through the, um, uh, the forest stage, like when you leave and you have to leave without getting the sword and the shield, like there's, you know, some way to do that. And then there is, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, then there, you have to get to the castle and not be seen by the guards and like do some crazy thing. And if you make it all the way through that, then, um, the owl, 
uh, Kapora Gabora, um, would teach you a special song called, uh, The Overture of Sages. And, uh, that, you would, you'd play that song and then it would take you to the Temple of Light. And I still remember, I can't find it now, but I still remember the Temple of Light, uh, screenshot that, uh, she had. I'm gonna see if I can find it. I, I was looking oh, before. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was kind of crazy because there was no, um, like background, uh, here it is, I found it, uh, save, let me see if I can pull this up, oh god, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, there, there's the picture here, right, and, you know, it was taken on a TV, so it looked so incredibly real, like, this is, this is basically the Photoshop of the day, you know, like, like what Photoshop is now, you know, yeah. back then, you know, it's on the screen. It's like nothing with those kind of patterns, stairs, walls, anything like that, uh, corridors that turn, they don't exist in the game. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of stuff that was, was put together to make that. And then the fact that it's slanted on a TV and it was just like, it was so believable. Yeah. Like with uh, the scan then. lines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. High rule the land. That's of pretty Zelda. convincing. So, yeah, I mean, you go back in the day for, like, um, like old Zelda rumors or whatever, and, and that's that's as convincing as you can get for back back in those times. And then you would go there, and you'd have to do some, uh, some quests or whatever. You know, they'd send you around to go do some things, and uh, every time you'd get back by playing the Overture of Sages, and you go back to the Temple of Light, and uh, eventually you would go and get beamed up to this area, and... Uh, you would uh, eventually get the Triforce. And then in the Zelda menu, right, the Triforce symbol is in there, but it's like, it looks like you could put it in, like, you could, you know, it's like it would be colored. Yeah, it, yeah. Everything else started that way in your your menu, and as you got them, that filled it, it filled in, it. put it in color, yeah. and, you know, the Triforce looked like that. Mm -hmm. It just, it doesn't. There's no way to do it. No. So. And I mean... <laughs> In the game's plot, it doesn't really make sense because the whole idea is that Zelda, Ganon, and Link have the Triforce within them mm -hmm. in the first place. So it's like, it's not physically there. Right. It's not, that's not supposed to be. But, you know, you could get it in the other Zelda games. So everyone was just like, well, why that was, not now? That was the big thing. Is like every Zelda game before this, the objective was to collect the Triforce. This was the yeah. first one where that was not the goal. So everybody kind of felt a little cheated, even though it was an amazing game. They're still like, but but you beat the For game, sure. it's like, where's the Triforce? So. It's like, it, it's here. Yeah. So <laughs> that one, I think, was, it's, I think, hands down, my favorite one. And, and only because I played into it so much. And Oh, yeah. Uh, and even now, there's, like, fake YouTube videos of people finding the Triforce, even though just basically hacked in a map. Right. Uh, with, like, the Triforce in it, you know, it was like, you, you know, it, it was so funny because, you know, the other reason it didn't make sense because the Temple of Light was actually supposed to be in the game. Right. But they turned it into, that's where just the sages take you. That's <laughs> considered the Temple of Light. When every time you finish a dungeon, that's just where they hang out. Right. You know, I, I heard him, I actually heard the rumor that you have to, there's a secret staircase below the Master Sword. Mm. that takes you down into the Temple of Light. And I was like, mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I tried everything. Oh, I, I wasted a, it. I wasted at least 100 hours, like, easily. Yeah. Easily doing that. Yeah. And finally, I was just like, there's no fucking Triforce. Like, I gave <sighs> up. I was like, there's no way. So that's when I was just like, no, it works. Like, I did it. And, you know. Sure. Because I knew, I was like, at that point, let's see how many other people I can get to waste 100 hours of their life. Like, if I had to do it, everybody else should do it. Fuck them. You know? <laughs> I might have been reading your forum post, too. Who knows? But <laughs> you could have. You very I, well could I remember, have been. I, yeah, I mean, who knows? But I remember reading a Nintendo Power that was like, you know, because they always just take, like, fan letters and whatnot in the beginning of the, the magazine. So I was like... Yep. One day there was a thing like, is the Triforce and Zelda I keep hearing blah, 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 blah? And they're like, no, dude. Did you, like, pay attention to the plot? And I was like, 
shit, God, what? <laughs> so that was that was pretty damning, I guess, for me. So I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Who cares? And then Majora's Mask was out by then, and I was like, eh, it's old news. Yep. But speaking of, really quick, Majora's Mask, mm. uh, there was a rumor of getting to go to the fourth day. Yep. And it was a rumor for a while until people found a glitch that actually let you get to the fourth day. Yeah, I was going to say, you could actually yeah. do it. and Yeah, now yeah. you can actually do it. It's pretty funny. Because, like, it's weird because like, none of the time-based events work. Yep. No ones whose movement is based on time exist. And the clock always just says, like, a blank. Like, whenever you, like, something would tell you what time it was, like, the time is now just a blank space. So, technically, that one was true. Yeah. <laughs> we just didn't know it. Right. So, do you have a, a favorite one? <sighs> My favorite is the myriad of Pokemon rumors and oh. shit. So that was just a gold mine. I mean, the big one, obviously, was Missing No. Because, but that was actually real. But, you know, you heard it first. It's like, wait, there's this glitch Pokemon called Missing Number and you have to surf on Cinnabar Island. Like, there's, you know, the whole way to get him was so esoteric. Like, you'd believe anything was true in Pokemon, because it's like, <laughs> you talk to the old man, you fly to Cinnabar Island, you swim down on the side of the island, and then Mewtwo, levels 87 Mewtwo shows up, and level 145 Snorlaxes, and then this glitch block, who gives you, you 255 of your sixth item slot. Like, that's so fucking specific. Like, <laughs> wait, wait, so wait, this is actually, this happened? This, I mean... This works in the game, or no? It's like, yeah, no, you never played? No. Oh, you no, don't know. I, okay. John, I just bought my first Pokemon game. <laughs> okay, right, like right. Like, three days ago. Okay, so Missing No, I'll explain it kind of briefly, like, how it works. So, Missing No, all right, so let's go to the basics. Bits of data back in Game Boy games had to be broken up into numbers, uh, uh, exponents up to 256. Mm -hmm. So, I think it was multiples of two, I believe. So, the deal is, is that the way the multiples work out, because there's 151 Pokemon, they had to use a number equal to 256 to store the data for the Pokemon, okay. which means there's, you know, over 100 empty spots because of 151 doesn't fill those up. So the idea is that the game is accessing those number spaces when it finds missing no, and that just stands for literally stands for missing number because it's right. not there. Um, so the deal is the way the glitch even works is when you talk to this old man in uh, Viridian City, he shows you how to catch Pokemon. He just, like, said, you know, old man gets into a battle with a Weedle, he throws the ball, catches the Weedle. Okay, cool. The problem is, was what happened was, the game stores your character name, whatever it was, Jim, Sarah, Billy, whatever it is, it stores it in the data area for random Pokemon encounters. Okay. So, what would normally happen is you would, the old man would show you because the old man would pop up instead of your name. So the old man would show you, you walk out to a route, and then as soon as you walked out to a new route, the data would just refresh and it would have the data for the route. So nothing would have happened normally. Here's the problem. That strip of land on the right side of Cinnabar Island could encounter Pokemon, but it had no route data on that single strip hmm. of land or water next to the land. And so, you know, it was reading your name as Pokemon data. So it was getting random bullshit so you get pokemon that were over level 100 you know all these weird glitchy pokemon and one of them sometimes is missing no or m as it turned out depending on what your name was so when you encountered missing no the sixth item in your inventory would get multiplied by 256 so you'd have 256 of everything in, the, in that slot, so Master Balls, the ball that catches things automatically, you'd right. have 256 of them. Rare Candies that auto-level your Pokemon. Enjoy, you know. Um, so... Why would anybody want that? Oh, God, no, I don't know. So, that one was true. And it, you know, spread around my school like wildfire. Now, <laughs> which oh, which version of Pokemon is this? Red and blue. Okay. Uh, they took the glitch out in yellow. Um, but... There was other ways to work, make it work in yellow, but that specific method didn't. So we use that like crazy because it's like infinite master balls. Sure, yeah, <laughs> catch everything. 
Mm -hmm. Um, But then there was like a million other things that popped up after that. So then gold and silver were rumored to be coming out, you know, in Japan. So there was like images here and there online. And then this idea of Pika Blue showed up. Oh, no. Which I'm sure, which I don't know if you know who that is. It's it's Meryl. It's the Pokemon Meryl. He's a okay. little blue mouse. He's very cute. He's got little round ears and a springy tail. He's adorable. I mean, and he vaguely resembles Pikachu. So my school, I remember as a kid, was like all over the place. Like, dude, Pika Blue is real seriously. He's like a water type. And like, you could find him on this secret island in blue version only. And like, I was like, oh, shit, we got to find this guy. So, like, you know, we did the missing no glitch and we did, like, all these other weird tricks that we thought could work out and that never did, of right. course. And Pika, Pika Blue was just Meryl and Gold and Silver. We, like, when Gold and Silver came out, we were just like, oh, you're just, okay. All right. Meryl. Well, it was way less exciting. <laughs> so, <laughs> another one, another crazy one was Mew. Because Mew was, obviously, we were just talking about Mew before the show. Right. The 151st Pokemon that was like a mystery to it all, to us all. And, you know, you can only get it through special events normally, but people were convinced that you could get Mew in the game, which is now true. Right. But there were all sorts of rumors where Mew was in Mew, you know, hidden in our special area of Mewtwo's cave, hidden. The be- the most popular was he was hidden under a truck. By yeah, I remember SSD. hearing that. Uh, yeah. People would spend hours trying to move the truck and. Yeah, you push the truck and Mew shows up. Yeah. Like, no. Turns out, funny enough, that is actually doable now with, like, you could just glitch the shit out of the game and you could push a truck and make Mew pop out. Yeah. Which is really funny. But, like, you could glitch the game so hard that if you talk to a sign, it gives you an EV. Okay. So Yeah. And there's also another... There's a very consistent way to get a Mew in blue if you really want to. It's not hard. Right. Um, there's, like, a teleport glitch that you can just exploit. Um, so that was a big one. Uh, another, The last in-game one that I heard when I was a kid was being able to challenge Professor Oak to a battle. Ooh. Which the cool thing is, is later in life, everyone was like, oh, he's got like all level 100 Pokemon, he's got like Arcanine and Gyarados and all these cool shit. Yeah. The funny thing was, his data is actually in the game and you can fight him if huh. you just hack the game. His his fight data is there. He has a full roster. Um, he is His Pokemon are very high level, not like 100, but he has all the starters maxed out. And then, a, like, a few other ones. Right. Um, the deal was, he was originally supposed to be the last fight in the game, but then they took him out and made it your rival instead. Huh. So, that one ended up being true, which is pretty funny. Um, I mean, I wonder how many people, like, knew about it, that or, like, had there was... early stuff, like, maybe, you know, like, um, advanced people, like, media, you know, something got a hold of something, they heard something, you know... Or like yeah. knew somebody on the staff or whatever that was actually talking about it, and then it slowly like trickled down and kind of became like this urban legend kind of thing. It it could have even been like a screenshot. Who knows? Like, yeah, of just yeah, just oak and a beta screenshot or something like that. I mean, yeah, because you know, to, for that data to make it all the way to the final product, like that was in the game for a while, obviously, which right. was pretty cool to find out. Like, holy shit, you can fight him. Yeah, and he has like t- he has. You know, text boxes, everything's done. Like, he has a speech and everything to give you. So, like, it's not like it's, you know, not supposed to be there. Right. So. See, now, they're re-releasing Red and Blue for the Nintendo 3DS. Yeah. I'm curious how many of these glitches actually persist. Oh, probably all of them. They're not, I don't think they're touching these. I don't think they're touching them. I'd be shocked. I don't know, it because seems like something that, that could potentially break the game where you can have unlimited Master Balls and everything like that. I mean, yeah, no shit. <laughs> you know, it, it seems like... That's why we did it. You're right, but it seems like something like that they'd want to fix. It's not going to break your game, even if you catch Missing No, like, which is not a good idea, but why not? it's weird, because Missing No is bird type and okay. water and flying type. Which makes no sense because why would you be? Because bird was the old term for flying right. in the game, so he's bird type and water type or something like that. And he has like two water guns and sky attack, which doesn't make any sense either. Okay. He has the highest health in the game, but the lowest defense in the game. His defense maxes out of four, and if you catch him, well, just seeing him messes up 
some things. It messes up your Hall of Fame, which is like your Pokemon that have beat the Elite Four, the last bosses in the game. So it glitches out that. And then by catching him, it caused like some f like lag and stuttering. It can crash the game. So just don't catch him, basically, was the rule. And if you did catch him, just release him, and then he'll stop. Oh. Fuck him up. So it was weird. I, I mean, but I don't think they're going to take them out. I don't, I don't think they would or can. Yeah, I don't know when. Do you know when they actually get released? The twenty seventh of this month. Okay, so know. eleven days from now. I guess we'll. F I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna find out. It's gonna yeah. Be the first thing I do is just. I'm really, them. really tempted because I, like I said, I have. Uh, I just bought uh, Omega Ruby. Mm -hmm. uh, as my first Pokemon game ever. Like I've been playing Pokemon Shuffle, you know, on the phone, which is clearly oh, yeah. not a Pokemon game. <laughs> um, it's like, it's like telling you that the first Pokemon game that I ever played, which is, this is true game. by the way, is Pokemon Snap. Oh, okay. Okay. And I played it for like five minutes, but I still played it. That's technically the first time I ever played a Pokemon game. It was at my cousin's house and okay. I just remember like sitting on a moving train, like taking pictures of Pokemon going, what the fuck is going on? So what are like, these things? Yeah. Like, I knew I've heard... I had heard of Pokemon at the time, but, like, I didn't own a, a handheld console. Like, the only time I, I had interaction with a, a Game Boy was when my friend Raymond would get on the school bus, and I would literally just take his Game Boy without asking and just start playing it. You were a good kid. I was, I was the best friend ever. And, <laughs> you know, whatever. And I played, I spent most of the time playing uh, Super Mario 3D Land or, or or regular Super Mario Land, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, because I was, like, fascinated. I'm like, Mario? Where are the Goombas? What What is this? Yeah. This is oh, not yeah. Mario? Like, yeah. Those yeah. games are very different. Yeah, so. Th there is one more <clears throat> rumor, but it didn't happen in-game, technically was the idea and it's still kind of like a creepy pasta thing going around the internet of mm. the lavender town suicides Ooh. so the idea was that the song in lavender town it's a creepy song okay. and lavender town has this pokemon graveyard in it so it's, a, it's even more creepy okay um, so the idea was that this music was causing kids to commit suicide like the music would trigger something in their brains and they would kill themselves like a day later uh. so like there was this whole mystique surrounding lavender town as well in the game so like you know we were all freaked you know the music legitimately scared the shit out of me when i was a kid so i was like this is cr i don't li I, like i just avoided lavender town if i could like i just i went there once when i had to and i never went back <laughs> turn your game sound all the way yeah. down you know yeah, I used to mute my Game Boy when I was in Lavender Town because it scared me. Yeah. So it was, that was a pretty solid rumor for a while. Like, and it turned into, like, you know, this big, there's all sorts of stories and whatnot about it. And huh. People have made, like, ROM hacks of Pokemon to, like, you know, make it even creepier. And, and like, you know, it doesn't help that you fight a ghost in the tower. There's ghosts everywhere. And, and your rival, allegedly, his Raticate died. And he was visiting its grave. Oof. So it's like, okay, fuck. Ugh. I'm going to imagine that this is also in blue and red. Yeah, this is all the original. Yeah. You're making me want to buy this game now. There was so much shit. 11 I mean, days. 11 days I may buy this. It's going to be only a few bucks. I mean, yeah. I think it's like 10 bucks, right? Maybe. I think only like eight. Okay. It's going to be that much. Yeah. But, yeah. Still um, so that was. That was when it got weird, because like that was like getting into like real life shit, and that was like pretty heavy to hear when you're in like the fifth grade. Yeah. So, Pokemon, like I think Missing No was just the the catalyst for all of it, really. See, and that that's that's the difference between like Mortal Kombat and uh, what's the company that does nin uh, Pokemon? Because it's not Nintendo. It's, uh, uh, Game Freak. Game Freak. That, like, that, you see, that's the difference between, like, Midway and uh, uh, Game Freak is they were listening to the fans because if I was the people of Pokemon and I I put a I'd name a Pokemon missing now, like, that would be in the roster right now. That would be the 700 and whatever, uh, what, what number was the one that they just announced? I lost track. 750 uh, something? Yeah, I don't know. 
Uh, that thing's name is way too close to Mangina. Yeah, uh, it's Me Meg Megierna. Megierna. Whatever. It it looks like Princess Peach to me. It but a robot bunny. It, it's a robot bunny version of Princess Peach, and it's like the seven hundred and something Pokemon. Is yeah. this was just announced like yesterday? I don't know. Enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mangier Mangierna. Yeah. I don't. Okay. I don't know. Well, but yeah, that that was uh, that was all the f stuff from Pokemon that uh floated around when I was a kid. Yeah, and it seemed like Nintendo is kind of the basis for most of the the rumors too, because I remember <laughs> uh, I remember Super Mario sixty four, like oh yeah, Luigi's a, a hidden character. Like yep. you can yes. play as Luigi. Yep. You have to beat Bowser before collecting a certain amount of stars, like the under the minimum, which is possible. It's now possible through a lot of glitches. Mm -hmm. uh, there was the collect. Uh, 121 star rumor. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a hidden star or something like that, and then you had to make it up to the castle before the cannon, before unlocking the cannon, you had to climb the wall or whatever. And oh. Yeah, yeah. there's there's a lot of stuff with that. And there, I remember there being one with Yoshi that you could like, actually use him and ride him. Yep. And not just find him and he gives you three one-ups. And then funny enough, <laughs> uh, when they remade the game for uh, the 3DS, they made Luigi and Yoshi playable characters. They threw yep. Peach in there, too, just for the hell of it, but... Uh, Wario. It was. was it Wario? Yeah, it was Wario. Oh, I thought it was Peach. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, no, I never I never played the, the 3DS. Like I said, I just recently got my first handheld. I, bo I got it when Link Between Worlds uh, came out. Yeah. So. Yeah, I... I... <laughs> I, did, I definitely remember the Luigi one, for sure. Because people were like, no, seriously, I saw it online. And like it turned out it was just like an April Fool's joke. They just like they just shopped Mario's clothes green. green. Yeah, it was like that's not Luigi, guys. Come on. Yeah. Well, I mean, at that point you couldn't really tell because we hadn't seen Luigi in three dimensions yet. Like the yeah. last time we saw him was in Mario World, and he shared the well, same sprites as Mario. So that that's true. That's true. You know. So I see. I was going by. I was going by Mario two because he had a very different. Yeah. Sprite in that one. So yeah, he did, but then Mario three came out and it went right back to, you know, insane. the old sprite again. So yeah, and then they did it again for Mario World. I think uh, Mario All Stars and Mario World. He's got his own sprites, but uh, yeah, but the original yeah. Mario World he does not. So no. And uh, the other, the other Nintendo one I could think of was Goldeneye, where uh, Odd Job and Mayday. Uh, appeared in the single player campaign which clearly is not true but you know there's rumors that they were hidden in there because you saw you know baron smitty um in the the temple in the you know in the end so they're like well aja mayday have got to be there because they're in you unlock them in multiplayer the same way you unlock baron smitty yeah so why wouldn't they be yeah i know yeah there was so many rumors about that and then that's when uh, something called the Citadel was was leaked, <clears throat> and people were like, "Oh, you do this, and uh, you can unlock the Citadel level, which is a hidden level. That's where Aja and Mayday are, and uh, if you beat that, then you unlock uh, the Dam, uh, Statue Park, and the Cradle in multiplayer." And I was like, "Oh my god, I got to do this!" And <laughs> then it turned out that uh, with Game Shark. You could actually use the Game Shark and unlock those three levels, and I think the um, the back door of the facility uh, was yeah. a, was another area that you can unlock with the Game Shark, and it was just like, why were these levels never put in the game? Statue Park, I understood because af after playing in the Game Shark, some areas of the floor would just like disappear. Yeah, you wouldn't fall through it, but it would but just it would disappear, do. and you couldn't yeah. figure out where you were going. But Cradle worked really well. But it was kind of an it, odd map to play. It was because I don't know. I feel like it was with too the open. cradle, it was already laggy, and yeah. I feel like with like four players, it would have been like a mess. Yeah. Well, I used to play it a lot with four players, <laughs> uh, but we would also turn because yeah, it did lag a bit, and you yeah. have to put in the code to turn the fog off. 
that was yeah. yeah. And that made it completely playable. Yeah. So oh, there you go. You know, there's things like that. Yeah. So it seemed like the most of you know the brunt of the ones that I remember anyway were were uh, Nintendo. Yeah. I mean, there was there was rumors in Final Fantasy VII that you could keep um, uh, Aerith alive. You know, there's and, and why would you really? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that was a big one. I remember. Like, Aerith doesn't have to die. It's yeah, she does. Just let it happen. Just deal with it. Deal with it. Just deal with it. I actually another Nintendo one I just remember was Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. My God. Um, well, because when Banjo Tooie came out, that's when it really happened. Because it had this thing called Stop and Swap. They kept talking about where. The idea was that like you would get collect items in the second game and the first game that you can transfer over to each other and they would unlock extra stuff. Um, that was weird. Like there was this item called the ice key that you couldn't get. It was in the first one. It was behind this wall of ice and you just couldn't touch it. Okay. It was there and you couldn't have it. And no one knew what the hell it was. And then the second game mentioned it in the stop and swap feature that was never actually implemented because Huh. The whole big thing, it was meant for the N64 disk drive that could like actually write data to the disk and this whole big thing, but it never happened. I remember sense. that very well because everybody was talking about Goldeneye, that you could create your own multiplayer levels and you know there was stuff going through the, the roof about the, the Nintendo mm -hmm. DD. That would have been insane, by the way. Yeah. But yeah, the whole big thing like of like, oh, you can get the ice key by doing this, this, and this. And it turns out you could get the ice key. You just had to like glitch your way through a wall, and you could just slip through a crack, and you you could get it. Nothing happened. Right. Um, there was this, these hidden eggs that you can get that didn't do anything in Banjo Tooie. There was a whole bunch of stuff for the stop and swap feature that just never actually happened. So there was a lot of rumors going on about that. I remember, but hmm. they, funny enough, in the remake uh, they did for the Xbox 360, I guess it was or Xbox One. Um, you know, the whole big rare thing came out, and actually the stop and swap feature's in there. Huh. You can actually do that and transfer the stuff in the games and unlocks, like, extra levels or some... I don't even actually know what it unlocks. It's just unlocks shit. But they put it in, finally. Interesting. Which was cool. It's about time. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so that was kind of neat. Hmm. And... Oh, the cow level. That was the other one. Oh. <laughs> Diablo. So, Diablo 1, the rumor was that there was a level filled with hellish bovine called the cow level that would destroy you and kill you. And then Blizzard was like, well... I think I think that fun. was also, uh, like, an EGM uh, April Fool's day. That might have been. That might have... I think you're right, actually. Because yeah. I remember seeing a screenshot of, like, enemies riding cows. It's like the succubus is something riding cows. Yeah. So, then Blizzard in StarCraft put in a code for the single player called There Is No Cow Level, and that would, I think, I think it was like the level warp code or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, so then they were like, all right, now they're just fucking with us. And then in Diablo 2, there's actually a cow level. <laughs> yep. You have to combine Wart's leg with a Tome of Town portal and Haradra Cube, and you get a portal to the cow level, and you fight very high level bovine wielding axes so that was a i guess sort of like the world combat guys the rumor that ended up coming true because it was just really funny well um, it was it was further perpetuated in um in the uh, unofficial expansion for diablo in hellfire uh, oh really? Yeah. When it, so the the expansion was made by Sierra. It was not made by Blizzard. Right. Uh, Sierra was the same company at the time that made games like King's Quest and and stuff like that. They kind of dropped off the map since then. But I think just recently King's Quest uh, is being released or something like that. Um, but uh, they had uh, a new NPC. It was a farmer who would go stand by the three cows that were in town in the back, like. Uh, Kind of in the back, like where Ad Adra, the the witch was, or Ada, the witch, Adria, um, Adria, and uh, you would uh, 
talk to him and he'd send you on some quest or whatever and then at some point there was some like weird thing you could do or was there was like a a text document or something that was in like the setup file that you would like just edit to like change one line of command or something and he would put on a cow costume and he would literally uh he'd be his dialogue like actual spoken in-game voice dialogue he'd just be like moo i said moo and then, like, he'd have, like, a quest or something that he'd give you. And as a reward, he'd give you, like, the Bovine King uh, chest plate or something like that. Oh. So, like, okay. they further perpetuated that rumor even even farther than Blizzard did at that point. Yes. You know? For the first game, anyway. And then, yeah. you know, Blizzard came along and, you know, hit it in the second game. And there was... There was no mention of it. There was... Even in the... I remember logging to Battle.net and sitting in the chat room and playing with that gem, you know, there was that gem in the middle of the chat room that would do absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you uh, clicked it enough times and it would, like, glow and say something or whatever, but that was it. It never did anything past yeah. that. Yeah. And I'm sure all it was was, like, a counter on Blizzard's end to see, like, how many times this button was pushed. How many times this asshole touched the gem? Yeah. I'm Just sure there was a know. tracker on that thing. It had to have. I guarantee you. <laughs> Just for fun. Um, so wait, and then the, you know by the third one that they changed it to Whimsy Shire and oh, you know, the, the My Little Ponies everywhere, and cupcake monsters. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whimsy Shire was weird. Yeah, I didn't like it as much. Yeah, it wasn't as funny because it just didn't have that cult like you know following that made it cool. You yeah, know? I mean even the cow level like as ridiculous as it was, we have cows standing up on their hind legs like walking around and swinging pole arms and scythes and stuff at you. Yeah. It still felt Diablo-ish. Yes, it was still dark and gritty and very difficult, actually. Yeah, where Whimsy Shire does not feel like Diablo at all. No. No, it's just very strange and off-putting. It's even weirder when, like, you're playing Rifts and those enemies just show up and, like, not in their location. It's very yeah. odd. But, um... I think the last, more recent one, I, well, I don't want to talk about the Binding of Isaac tonight. <laughs> no? Take, I can't. It's going to take forever. Not, um, not even a little bit? Eh, that, deserve, that could do it. That could be its own show, again. Um, suffice to say, the, the story of Binding of Isaac after birth is sordid and insane. You can just go look it up. Um, but the aliens in Mario Galaxy 2, uh, and I forget specifically what stage it's in but it's in one of the nighttime stages and there's these three weird little figures that are just kind of poking their heads over the horizon it's just a silhouette with eyes and yep. they're like there the whole time like no matter where you stop and look they're always there watching you huh. and it's like everyone was like trying to get to them so people like you know use their hacking and game shark or whatever and you know use levitate and flew over to them and it's the closer they got the farther away they got <laughs> so like you could never actually reach them so it, it was like this it, you know this whole big thing of like oh like, you know this conspiracy theory of like oh they're like the watchers or like the real engineers of the mario universe and it's like this whole big piece of bullshit mm. and you know people to the point where like people are asking me and moto like what are those alien things and he would just like chuckle and kind of brush it off because he was just fucking with us. Right. <laughs> was what it ended up being. He's like, yeah, no, we just, he's like, I don't actually know what you're talking about at some point. He was just like, I don't know what you mean. And they showed him. He was like, oh, <laughs> must have been a joke from one of the, you know, one of the graphics guys. Yeah. Just fucking, okay. <laughs> the internet was on like this witch hunt over the damn things. For absolutely no reason. I mean,. I mean, you get over like some of the other th like Mar. What is uh, what is uh, Bowser Junior's mother's name? You know, like who who is she? And he did the same thing. He's just like it's me. It's like really, like that's such a cop out answer. You know. <laughs> I mean, it, it's yeah, but like he always said that Mario was supposed to be like a stage performance, and like well, Mario three was well, right, but. That 
but he uses the Mario characters as like actors, and he just places them in situations and just lets them kind of be like. So there really is no story, you know. Right. You don't know who Mario's parents is. They're vaguely mentioned in Yoshi's Island, but you know, they, it doesn't. You know, the thing is, is it doesn't need it. Right. It's like, how did Bowser have a son? It's like, how do you know he doesn't just lay eggs? Like, exactly. That was that was what that's, I, that's been my theory the entire time. Gives a shit. Like, <laughs> he's got a kid. He's asexual. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you don't want to you don't want to even hint at the binding of Isaac. Put it this way. There was a hidden character in the game that we didn't know about. But then we found in, out about it. In the it. original one or in the expansion? In Afterbirth. Okay. In the expansion. Well, it happened in the original as well with the character called The Lost. But that one took about a week and a half of data mining and they found out how to do it. But that was very esoteric and weird on lock anyway. You had to like use different characters and die in specific places in specific ways. and yeah, Weird. So now this character was called The Keeper. And the sprites appeared to be, from hacking into the game, it appeared to be this old man with like a staff and he looked like, you know, the keeper of heaven, maybe like St. Peter or something like that. Right. So it turns out it wasn't that. And we got sent on this witch hunt to like find one thing. There were items missing from the game of the promised, like 120 new items or whatever. There's only like 76. So we're like, well, where the fuck's the rest of them? Right. And it turns out legitimately there was something wrong with the steam upload and the items just weren't there. And, huh. It was just a mistake. So they were just like, oh, shit. So they patched them in real quick, and they were like, okay, sorry. Yeah, we didn't mean that for that to happen. The items should be there. And But there was still something missing. There were still items missing, like a few of them, like seven or eight. We were like, what the fuck? Right. So as it turned out, Edmund, the creator of the game, kept dropping these crazy hints and whatnot, like, you know, I'll never tell. <laughs> um, and ended up making a post about all the changes in the game on his blog. Um, you know, about some characters getting nerfed, some items getting adjusted, items missing, and what was going on. But if you lined up and read everything in the first column, it just said, you are so close. Huh. Like, each of the first letter. So it's like, oh my god, what does this mean? And then people were looking in the Bible for answers. <laughs> in, the, in the chapters of the actual book, the Bible. And then... It, it it got crazy, and then they found I forget exactly how, but they found numbers that were pointing to a specific location under a boardwalk in California, in Santa Ana. Like That's real latitude and longitude location. So in the real world, the real our terrestrial plane. So. So this group of guys were like, it was all in the subreddit. They're like, all right, who's in the area? Like, let's get a group and we're going to go. So they went and they brought their shovels. They brought shovels? They brought shovels. Like they, they were brought... they were ready to go. They didn't like go there and find anything so, out of the order. They, they went with shovels. They found a missing poster with Isaac on it. And it had the phone number... And it had like a like a phone number on it. It's like you know for Isaac's dad. This wait, the, they found this at the location or dug and found it at the location. Okay. They found this paper with Isaac's dad's phone number for that his son was missing. They pulled it out and they they called it and it was just a message like a garbled voice of Edmund, you know, acting like Isaac's father. It's an answering machine. So then they dug, and they found a little statue of this character called Greed, who's one of the seven deadly sins in the game, a boss you can fight. And it was a dead Isaac. And it had a Twitter handle, like an actual little figurine. And it had a Twitter handle written on it with a note on his back that said, give me a voice. So the guys logged onto that Twitter using the information on the, on the doll, uh, tweeted as Isaac. And then as soon as they tweeted, a patch was released to Afterbirth, which unlocked the Keeper. Huh. So, and it turns out the Keeper was not an old man. They put those models in the game to fuck with us, to lead us astray. And it was really greed, like a, a, an asphyxiated Isaac. Wow. With coins for health. So 
that's the rough short story. If you go on the subreddit, you can find the full, detailed, crazy psychopath story. It sounds like Cards Against Humanity's, like, holiday bullshit puzzles. With the island in Maine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's absolutely insane. I actually almost rented a boat and went to the island myself. I, I know. Whatever un- you say. <laughs> until I saw a bunch of people selling the card on eBay for a dollar. I was like, that is, uh, that's a lot cheaper. A dollar's cheaper than a boat. Yeah. So, that is the short version. Unfortunately, I mean, that was right. the short version of it. Yeah. Um, no, you've piqued my interest. I'm going there. I'm telling you right now. As soon as we're done with this podcast, I will be on that subreddit. I, oh, I, yeah. I have not even played Rebirth yet, and you've piqued my interest. So. Well... Um, I will actually put the link in chat for anyone who's watching presently. Awesome. Um, so anyone who wants to check it out, you can just find the story there. Um, but yeah, very interesting. Probably the the most recent and craziest like game rumor mill that was going on because it was just a week of like, guys, guys. Yeah. I found this note in the game. I don't know what it means. Like you know crazy crazy stuff yeah and i mean the the last one that i could think of was back in original vanilla wow was the whole story of finding the uh uh ashbringer oh yes you know, it was right this legendary paladin weapon and you know it was supposedly hidden in the game and there was all these different rumors that had to do with like fishing and like all kinds of crazy stuff uh there was uh, uh, a rumor that a lich uh, had the lich, lich had formerly been the the crafter of the sword in the first place, and you would go to this cave in uh, the Western Plaguelands, and you'd fight a bunch of slimes, and you'd find his uh, uh, like little what what is it phylactery? Phylactery. Phylactery. Um, you find that thing, and it like it was it was labeled a quest item, but you weren't on a quest when you got it. And there's like all kinds of like weird things uh, involved uh, regarding it. And then there was like whispers in when they patched in Dire Mall, which was like the first uh, uh, dungeon that was patched into the game. Uh, right. After right. I think Mordon might have been first, but it was like the the first one around the time that the rumors started going in. Mm-hmm. And there were whispers from some of the NPCs in there talking about the Ashbringer, which only further, like, perpetuated these rumors, which led people to go fishing outside of, like, Ravenhold Manor, where the, the rogues are hidden. There's, like, a pond, and there's, it was, like, this big in-depth thing that ended up going nowhere. So Yeah, I actually uh, do remember that. Yeah. And actually, do you remember, like, well, you could do it, like, getting into, like, the zones you weren't supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> like, the old uh, World Tree and that yep that yeah, one I, I actually went to yeah i remember going to hydro i still have pictures of my character somewhere um I I, on my old computer probably yeah that's where i think they are on my old computer as well uh pictures of me standing like by the uh con- under construction sign and stuff like that yeah so that was funny yeah and then you could get into the emblem dream yeah there was all sorts of cool exploring you could do in wow back in the day yeah it was a lot of fun all kinds of crazy rumors Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I I think that's about it. You got anything else? Uh, no, I think we got through that show without too many tinfoil hats. So that's mm. pretty good. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So I think that about does it. Uh, next week, I believe we're going to be talking about Hearthstone. Is that is that true? Yeah, we'll be talking about uh, the recent. Well, not so reason but the announcement that uh hearthstone is going to be having set rotations in a new right. standard format so stay tuned for that yep we'll get into that next week uh john where can the people find you y'all can find me at no more no more on twitter possibly posting conspiracy theories about shit that's not real Whatever. excellent uh you can find me down below at xizta with an underscore um yeah you can find uh Mike, who's not with us today, not that he died or anything, he just lost his internet, yeah. um, at, at Philadren, T-H-I-L-L-A-D-R-E-N, and uh, you can find all of us and more on uh, 
youtube.com slash ASO TV podcast, as well as on uh, Twitter at Serious Gents. Um, and if you watch these shows live, for the time being, they are still on twitch.tv slash uh, Serious Gents. So, um, till next week. We'll see ya. I like, I like this music. I don't, I, we normally very... don't get to this this far into the song. Huh. It's just... It's a good song. It is. Who made this song? My brother and his friend. Oh. Yeah, if you guys click on the link below, you, you can hit them up. Please do.